Now, we're looking at reactions we've had barely a few hours after President Mohamed Buhari launched the e-Naira platform, making Nigeria the first African country to adopt a digital currency. Now, the e-Naira is a culmination of several years of research by the Central Bank of Nigeria in advancing the boundaries of payment system, and it is also expected to increase Nigeria's GDP by at least $29 billion over the next 10 years. TVC News correspondent Taya Modi tells us more in this report. The launch of the e-Naira makes Nigeria the first country in Africa, one of the first in the world to introduce a digital currency to her citizens. <laughs> President, who is pleased that the development is optimistic that the introduction of the e-Naira would enable the government send direct payments to citizens eligible for specific welfare programs, as well as foster cross-border trade. This move was underpinned by the fact that the CBN has been a leading innovator in the form of money they produce and in the payment services they deploy for efficient transactions. They have invested heavily in creating a payment system that is ranked in the top 10 in the world and certainly the best in Africa. He commends the governor of the central bank, Godwin Emefiele, his deputies and the entire team of staff who worked tirelessly to make the launch of Africa's first digital currency a reality. In his remarks, the CBN governor explained that e-Naira is the digital equivalent of the physical Naira, a legal tender in Nigeria and designed to secure safeguards and maintain the integrity of the financial system. Establish that a digital currency will drive a more cashless, inclusive and digital economy and will complement the gains of previous policy measures and a fast-growing payments platform in Nigeria. He pledged that there will be strict adherence to the anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism, AML CFT standards, in order to preserve the integrity and stability of Nigeria's payment system. The CBN has given careful consideration to the entire payments and financial architecture and has designed the e-Naira to complement and strengthen these ecosystems and have implemented secure safeguards and policies to maintain the integrity of the financial system. The CBN is also to introduce a new financial instrument titled the 100 for 100 PPP, Policy on Production and Productivity. It will be anchored in the Development Finance Department under the direct supervision of the Central Bank Governor. Under this policy, the CBN would advertise, screen, scrutinize, and financially support 100 targeted private sector companies in 100 days, beginning from the 1st of November 2021, and roll over every 100 days with a new set of 100 companies whose names will be published in national dailies for Nigerians to verify and confirm. Tai Amudu, TVC News, Abuja. Well, now to discuss this and much more and all of the reactions we've had in the last 24 hours, I have joining me virtually policy analyst and founder of the Wealth Hackers, Binga Unifade. Good to have you on the show this afternoon. It's been quite an interesting twist of reactions we've had so far. Barely 24 hours ago, uh, the president unveiled the country's central bank digital currency, the e-Naira. This is the first in Africa and is also expected to grow the nation's GDP by well over $29 billion. How do you see this redefining business transactions in the country, financial inclusion, and what does this mean really for the digital economy space along the West African region to start with? Okay, uh, thanks for having me. So this actually does seem to me like it's a really good initiative. However, I think it's a little bit of a false start. Uh, I mean, I tend to say there's nothing wrong with being the second or the third. I know the Bahamas, they started before Nigeria started this project. But we have so many challenges, which, you know, instead of trying to pioneer, uh, you know, a nation in this field, one of the things is, you know, because I actually did go through the 27-page the white paper, which I must say is very unbiased and very well articulated. However, there are more opportunities than threats 
uh, you know, if, if I'm talking about the threats, we're talking about cyber security, the financial loss. And, you know, we're looking at the unbanked exposure and the rejection. And one of the things the CBN kicked out in is the CIA, which is the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So I think we do have more threats than opportunities at the moment. But, you know, the key two key things we need. One is education, and the other one is comfort, you know, stakeholder engagement. So we have, an, I mean, this is the pioneering in Africa right now. Uh, and there's also the MasterCard, which, of course, most Nigerian cards, or should I say bank cards, are built upon the platform. One of the things I've been reading about them is of finding out is that they are happy to work and build a platform for this. So I think it actually should be a good initiative. However, it's still very much untested. You know, the, the rollout has been very, very little. We're only looking at about 2,000 people so far. You know, I, so I probably will say it's more or less still in the beta stage uh, rather than, you know, being, being nationally adopted. Mm. Well, in the first few hours, we had well over 5,000 downloads in terms of the app. Now, one of the critical elements analysts are looking out for following this digital currency launch is the element of transparency and regulatory oversight. You've made mention of data security. How fundamental would you say this is using cues we've had from other economies in crypto trading? What are some lessons that you expect us to learn from, replicate, and not necessarily make the same old mistakes to ensure a successful digital currency? Okay, so th that's a really brilliant question, David. If you think about with, with the cryptocurrency, for example, that is actually looking to eliminate the financial institutions. There is no central authority. Uh, how is crypto mined? It's been mined, or so has crypto been made? It's been made by miners who are effectively solving a maths puzzle compared to digital Naira, which is more or less is backed by a physical hard currency and is being supported and you know it's got a central authority there is a there, there's a threat to the naira of course which as you could recall in february the nigerian bank of cbn they did ban ban the cryptocurrency trading and you know with threats to close your account if you found to be trading this asset so so there's that threat but on another on other hand they both crypto in a sense really this cannot really be traded <laughs> uh, this is backed by a physical naira so it's got a physical asset being done to it also one of the things you, we need to take into consideration is that you know as a nation one of the key things we do have is number one is waste and number two is tracing of resources uh, the, the the naira itself we have about four sorry three trillion in circulation and that's bit, which has gone on seven percent being compounded on an annual basis between 2010 and 2020. So within that 10 years, there's been a lot of wastage. There's a lot of Naira which cannot be traced. But with the digital Naira, of course, uh, it's very difficult for you to be able to send. One of the one of the, the, the key problems with cryptocurrency, you could send money to a wrong wallet and it cannot be, well, it can be traced, which is going to be similar to the Naira. Sometimes it cannot be reversed, but with the digital Naira, you will be able to track it. You will know exactly where things are. Again, speaking of, the, of, of traceability or confidentiality, especially one of the things Nigeria is struggling with is taxation. How do they get all this money from people who are evading taxes? So if everything actually goes uh, with the digital era, which is complementing the previous policies the CBN have had, then every asset could be taxed, uh, to, sorry, could be traced up to the latest Naira. It helps, of course, reduce inflation as well. And it does actually put more money in the coffers. Mm. And looking more circumspectively on the issue of traceability, now we are seeing here that the CBN in is saying that, well, we will be able to track and also look at nipping and the border fraudulent purposes being initiated by some individuals. That's one of the biggest concerns we've also had in terms of reactions. But the e Naira, according to the governor, has the strongest security because it cannot be forged or counterfeited as a result of its unique identity and security structure. We've had about 33 banks, at least in the last few hours, join the platform and over 500 uh, million naira worth of CBN mints, uh, the e naira mints. How do you see all of this interplace, uh, interface playing out? This still remains a frontier. It's a try and error despite all of the research. You're right. It is a trial and error, actually. And, uh, you know, that statement, it's a lot of grammar CBN have actually stated. But 
I mean, you can't really. That's the essence of cryptocurrency. It cannot be traded. It, can, it cannot be. It cannot be forged. And uh, you cannot double mine it. It's all about traceability and transparency. And that's one of the things. Yes, they've got about five hundred million naira. I think one of the things the CBN is trying to do is one of the things which we struggle with in Nigeria as Nigerians are trust. How do we trust our nation? How do we trust ourselves? We've had so much money being wasted on frivolities. Number one, some of them which cannot even be traced. So they're more or less re-emphasizing what cryptocurrency does. But of course, this time around, in the e-naira space, which I think a big nation, China, is trying to force as well, and trying to enforce it. And of course, it does could strengthen the naira. Okay, they've had about 500 million being minted right now, 33 banks being integrated. So one of the key things we might struggle with is, you know, which one of the things I wanted to touch on about is the fact that this is actually being taken, you know, it's being outsourced. So... There, there comes the cost, sorry, there comes the risk out there. Uh, I think we have the Bits Incorporation, and so it's built on the Hyperledger uh, fabric blockchain. None of this is made in Nigeria. So even though we've got it, we call it the e Naira, but it's not based on Nigerian platform. It's been mined, uh, or sorry, minted in Nigeria, but by an external agency. That, I think, is a risk. It could create another legal risk on its own, which is another broad area which we shouldn't really talk on about. But so it does actually have its own risk. But when it comes to on the monetary side of things, transparency, uh, inclusivity, inclusivity, and of course inclusivity rather, and of course education, which helps helps build the nation. I think it's a really great initiative. But overall, so far, and, and that's why I you know I wasn't very, very comfortable with Nigeria being the first to do this. I miss all this pomp <laughs> and parade. Uh, it's all a lot of trial and error, I will say. It's a lot of trial and error, but definitely it's a, it's a big feat to command for Nigeria taking the center stage as one of the first in Africa to launch such an initiative. But let's now look at the simplicity of the enrollment process to get signed up for the e -Nira. Now, signing up with your BVN and banks assisting to ensure seamless enrollment sounds quite simplistic, wouldn't you say? How much of a reception now do you see from the Nigerian market? Yes, we've had the initial rush, but do you think that sentiment can be sustained? And you already have those who have made up their minds just based on the reaction of the Central Bank of Nigeria and the kickback to crypto trading, for example, looking at Bitcoin and other crypto assets. Yeah, <laughs> so th th there's no rush, John, you know, jumping on that in Arab bandwagon, really, because one of the things I have noticed, though, of recent is this is a product by the bank, sorry, by the CBN. However, for these for the banks to integrate themselves into it. Now, one of the things the banks or the Nigerian government is, sorry, the CBN is doing is trying to make sure this, the, the, the banks are forcing it on the clients, are ruling it out. But the banks are saying, no, no, we've got other products to push. It's your job to push this product. But CBN is saying, no, no, we will enforce this in, this initiative, but it's your job to roll it to, the, to, 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 to your clients. But the key thing is working together. The CBN and the banks, they have actually working agreements. And there were 33 banks, which is already big, and big giant banks, of course, which have integrated the e-Naira. So there's an e-wallet, which, which is just a virtual wallet, which has been created. So you can, you can move your phones. But, you know, like, likewise, very, very seamlessly. And if you think about it, it's actually a great time to in introduce this e naira This is COVID. Nobody wants to touch anybody. So, <laughs> hey, I pay you without having to move an inch. I don't have to pay any sort of charges. So it works for me in a way. I'm cutting down charges. It works for the government. They're tracing every currency. But at the same time, when it comes to how difficult it is, it's not as difficult at all. I think it's just an extension to the, to, to the existing platforms, the banks, where they already have an extension to them, education of the, of the, of the local populace. And of course, we, we do have a lot of people still on banks right now. And one of the last initiatives which the CBN introduced, um, I think, is the Shared Agents Network Initiative, which got 40 million people uh, of the unbanked. But we still have a lot more unbanked citizens. And I think that will be the key pressure get to them to be able to use it because people love what they can see, what they can touch. That's yeah. the hard currency. Now I'm going to get these people, tell them, don't worry about it. Your money is just a few digits on your mobile phone. That's the first thing. And Benga, that's the how, thing uh, let me button here now. How does this statement also rub off on you? The e naira is expected to enable effective, equitable and faster uh, dis distribution of cash assistance to households and communities, including uh, government social welfare 
programs in the utilization, the purpose of this uh, digital currency as a vehicle to reach the masses. How does this really come to you? Some say talk is cheap. How effective would this be? And you've also made mention of the unbanked. We have so many individuals living in the rural areas, not necessarily technologically inclined. Hence, this agenda is a little flawed. Do you share in this sentiment? I do, I do. I think I, I do align with the masses in this case because we do have, and it comes back to the fundamentals, as, you know, as a Nigerian, I think it's actually very poor. It's more of a chicken and egg, really, which of them comes first. So we don't have the database. We don't have the statistics. It's quite funny yesterday, I got an email from my bank talking about my credit score. And I'm thinking, okay, I've not been living in Nigeria for 25 years. How do you know what my credit score will be? And so some of the things they introduce, which is the, you know, the NIN, the BVN, but do we think what percentage of the population have this BVN? What percentage of the population have this NIN? What is the database? How many? What is the effective population of Nigeria? How sure are we with these things? You know, in terms of, so once we have the fundamentals uh, very well aligned, targeted, because there's no point trying to pioneer. Well, it's all good on paper, but if you don't have the effective numbers to back it up, I don't think it's right at all. And like you said, of course, this is a country, it's so hard to trust Nigeria. And I'm sorry, it's just, I have to say this on national telly. We need to get the basics right. We need to get the, we need to get the data right. We need to get the statistics right. Because otherwise, it's just going to be another initiative for the few and not for the many. And the, 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 the whole purpose will get defeated. So again, we need to roll it back. So in effect, in, in, in effect maybe the, the, the beta stage, testing stage, might just have to take longer while we get the other things nip in the board and tackle. Because we need to get the data database sorted out. We need to get many people on the database before we even talk about educating them about, about the e naira at all. You know, when we're talking about this, the, the, the states, individual states population, which is the first thing to get these things controlled, you know, we don't even have that. So something as simple as data, which is very difficult in its own right, in its own sense, we need to get that right before we actually move on to the other sense. So yeah, for me, I think it's a chicken and egg. And uh, you're right, it's, talk is very cheap. We talk a lot of sense when it comes to doing these things, but how do we implement them? And I think uh, perhaps maybe that's one of the things they thought about before delaying it, but at the end of the day, being the first counts for nothing if you cannot back it up. Mm. We definitely have to back it up. Now, let's look at the fate of the Naira now, uh, the fiscal cash. Uh, which is experiencing some level of free fall, as some would describe, against global currencies like the pound sterling and the dollar. Do you see this initiative, the e Naira, helping to reintroduce some level of stability to the Naira currency? That's the fiscal cash. Now, using the scenario of countries that have already experienced some similar fate as well of dwindling value, how do we give this some uh, resemblance of stability? <laughs> So the e naira is just one naira. One e naira is just one That's naira. It doesn't thing. do anything. <laughs> so, <Exactly>. <laughs> however, <laughs> if you think about the inflation in in Nigeria, it's actually gone through the roof. The naira was on free fall. One of the key things I, I saw was, you know, naira was. I think naira actually went to record low this year. You know, even the vice president slammed a few policies with the CBN. I think they were at loggerheads at some point, and with a few businesses being at loggerheads with the CBN, you know, uh, at some point, I think I read a headline, we talked about the CBN governor, that he, he's even struggling to tame this Naira. So this Naira is a, is a roaring tiger, but roaring on the other way around. You know, it was just going through a dark tunnel, and uh, more Nigerian actually lost faith in the Naira. Most people started holding their wealth in, in you know, in US dollars or, or, or the foreign pounds. So, that's one thing. And I think the CBN were trying to choke the, you know, there was struggle with forex supply. So how does this be? I think the only way I think it could combat this is just getting more money into the coffers, really. Uh, like we talked about the, 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 you know, the foreign, foreign exchange transmission, it reduces the cost. That's a good one there. Uh, it reduces cost for Nigerians as well. And, and of course, traceability, taxation, so the government can see more things. Because if you think about it right now, we fully depend on oil. That's what we still depend on in this new age. So how does it, how does it encourage or batter inflation? I don't really see that doing much to inflation-wise. But 
what do you need to battle inflation? You need more money. And one thing people do not like is uncertainty. We don't like we we have this uncertainty across the Naira. We have this uncertainty. But until people see that, and I've actually taken a little questionnaire, not just with many people, but I think with a hundred people, and about seventy-five percent of them said no, they're not going to take it on yet. So they have the issue of trust in the Naira. Uh, not just effectively with the people, but more in the Naira. So people have lost faith in the Naira. They've lost faith in the government. They've lost faith in the currency itself, in the country. So until we start seeing some effects, some other areas where things are working, we start seeing productivity. Even though the, the economy, the past few months, started roaring back again, things started looking good all over again. But we've had two recessions in, you know, in, the, in five years, and people still don't, you know, people don't have short memories sometimes when it comes to these bad things. So effectively, people just thought, you know what, you know what, I've got a bridge to sell you if you think the e naira will save the Naira. That's what they told me. And uh, generally, I, I still don't have that faith in the Naira myself because right from, if you look at overall, it's just been going on record percentage compounding loss, you know, as a Naira. So it's not effectively, it's not that great. But until we have a rethink of where the Naira is going, where we are going ourselves as a nation, as an infrastructure nation, led nation maybe, as a rethink of our strategies and policies, uh, no, the e naira will not just save the naira. Yes, it's going to put some money in the coffers, but it's not going to save the the the, the dying naira. Unfortunately, no. Wrapping up our conversation now, let's also look at what sort of forecast. In terms of uh, the peg, we're looking at also increase in Nigeria's GDP by twenty nine billion dollars. Uh, all of these uh, prospects we yet to achieve, you share a mixed sentiment towards that as to how well we receive this. In a breakdown, what sort of prospect do you see at the end of the day with a heavy reception, a warm reception and adoption of the e-Naira in terms of our day-to-day -day transactions, both on the local level and then at a regional level? We are looking at also establishing this in terms of relations and transactions on the back of the African continent of free trade area agreement. We're moving into the realm of cashless, seamless uh, experiences. We want a seamless one, but at the end of the day, we are looking at the gains we would like to make. Do you see this being feasible in 10 years, a decade, making as much as $29 billion in addition to the worth of our GDP? So what you've got to think about is what's the GDP of the Naira? It's $29 billion is, you know, it's a sizable percentage, okay? So the fact that you are moving to a cashless policy does not just save the Naira. The Naira has been weakening on a 5.6% year-on-year uh, weakness, okay? How much does it cost in terms of infrastructure, in terms of wastage, in terms of resources to bring the fiscal Naira and distribution, okay? So you can't value that as 29 billion Naira, I think, billion dollars. I think that's just, uh, that's, that, that's a lot of numbers, but not just on that side. Now, if you think about the, for, for, for the citizens, okay? What ease and comfort does it bring to me, okay? If it brings comfort to me, I'm, I'm going to encourage using it. If I encourage using it, I save me some money. The government save themselves some money. That's another one. Eh? That's another one uh, ticked away. Then the third thing that you, you have to think about is now the government are they seeing the cash? Okay, that's some wild projection. I don't really trust the projection. I think it. I, I probably will say I'll be, I'll be looking at just about ten percent of that. But if they say twenty nine billion, then that must have told a lot about the past in terms of how much it cost the fiscal naira. But Sometimes these figures do actually get inflated just in case to, to encourage the, the, the loyal citizens to, to support this initiative. So personally, I don't think, I think that that, that number must, must have been, you know, like they say, sector, but it, it's not, the, 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 the numbers are, is, is not exactly accurate to me in, based on the, the, the research I've done. And again, the, the problem with the Naira is, is more than just one, it's a, a four or five, ten pronged approach in trying to save the dying Naira. You can't just bring the E-Naira and think this is just going to be, 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 be the solution. I don't think they think it's going to be a solution. And the, the amount they think it will bring in in terms of coffers, because at the end of the day, we're not just rescuing the Naira. Remember, some of them still keeps going back out in terms of payments. So we, we are saving in, in terms of charges. We are seeing fraudulent being tracked, uh, transactions being tracked effectively. Similarly, transactions not being eased, of course. Uh, what else? It, it helps discourage people moving money because now they know they can be traced, they can be tracked. But 
But in terms of overall wastage, it's definitely not up to that amount, uh, to my knowledge at all. Again, we need something we can trust. We need a nation that we can trust. Uh, people haven't been trusted in the, the, the data they've been providing us. So you're not just going to throw a number at me and tell me to embrace it. I don't think um, it's, it's loyal, no. Well, we'll definitely keep our eyes fixed on the data and all of the reactions that will be coming up in the coming days and see whether or not the e Naira would have a strong footing in the Nigerian economy. Thank you very much for your time on the show today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, Benga Anifade. Thanks for having me.